This is an MSNBC special event. Illegal immigration, it's the hot topic on America's southern border. We need an immigration policy that works. A policy that meets the needs of families and businesses while honoring our tradition as a nation of immigrants and a nation of law. A flashpoint in the congressional campaign. I don't know how anyone of Hispanic heritage could be a Republican. Okay? Do I need to say more? Tonight, we tackle the issue head on with Americans whose lives have been directly affected. Latinos who say they are here to stay. I feel American. I am American. This is the community that saw me grow up. And voices of Americans who want illegal immigrants gone. They're coming in and, and grabbing what they can get. Immigration. Can we get beyond the borderlines? That's our topic tonight. Beyond Borderlines, live from the University of San Diego. Good evening, I'm Lawrence O'Donnell, and welcome to the University of San Diego. We're going to talk tonight, and yes, maybe argue a bit, about the issue of immigration in the Latino community. There are 50 million Latinos in America. They are our fastest growing minority, but millions are here illegally. And the political debate over what to do about that has deeply divided Americans, especially in border states. Before we begin, please welcome my partner tonight, Maria Teresa Kumar, Executive Director of Voto Latino and an MSNBC contributor. Maria Teresa, thank you. Thank you for joining us. I'm Maurice Reese, we're going to drill down on Latino immigration, including legal and illegal immigration, but the immigration story in this country is bigger than just Latinos, isn't it? It's our identity. I mean, we're one of the very few countries, if not the only country, where it's been built on people self-selecting themselves to come to a country, have the identity, and really empower ourselves. And I think the challenge is, is that it's a different wave of immigration, but it's a story, again, that's interwoven of who we are fundamentally. And that's why I'm so excited to be here tonight. And on MSNBC, the place for politics, uh, we've discovered, as I think everyone has, that Latinos are a very significant voting bloc now. They decided the election in Nevada for Harry Reid and others. Uh, what is happening in Latino uh, voters' uh, participation now and going forward? Well, they keep surging. And I think the number one thing is, is that immigration is a critical part of the equation for Latino voters, but jobs as well. And what's happening right now is that it's so, immigration has reached such a heated point that we can't have an honest conversation. And that's what this is about. It's about, yes, we need to talk about our globalization and how we have to compete on a global level as immigrants, but we also have to talk about how to do national security. But more importantly, we're talking about families. People who we're talking about are parents and families that are being torn apart. And how do we have that conversation? Well, let's get to the conversation. To begin, let's go right to the heart of the battle over illegal immigration, the feelings shared by millions of Americans that illegal immigration is harming their country, and in some cases, their way of life in their communities. We went to Fremont, Nebraska, a town of 26,000, where some people are worried about a surge in illegal immigration. Their answer was new local laws to do what they say state and federal laws are failing to do. Here are some of those people in their own words. Fremont has that small town feeling of ride your bike anywhere, great school systems, hardworking people too, I'd say. You have your farming community outside Fremont, you have meat packing. The population is around 25,000. It's a close-knit community. It's like everybody knows everybody. I've lived here my whole life. It's just a great community. It's very frustrating. People are fed up. There are a lot of people that are very angry. I think everybody sitting here is proud to be American. And it bothers them to see their, the way of life change so drastically because of a, something that shouldn't be there. The problem was that we had um, illegals starting to become greater in number in the, the city of Fremont. And all of a sudden you'd be at the grocery store 
and everybody's talking uh, Spanish around you. I'm going, where did this come from? We're, in the, we're about as far away from the border as we can get. I think that became very disconcerting to people around here. I think it bothered them. We're middle America, we're kind of mainstream, you know, we're not real flashy, we're not the low deal. I think people felt like it was getting an intrusion put upon them that these people weren't invited and they're, and they're here. We're not getting doctors and lawyers and, and ITT techs and, and Finnish carpenters. We're, 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 we're getting whatever's, whatever's rolling down the river. Which is causing the uh, crime rate to go up, uh, police costs to go up, the school costs to go up, the hospital costs to go up. They're not paying into our system, and unfortunately they don't have health insurance, a lot of illegals, and so they use emergency services that cost a ton more than if they saw a normal doctor. We're footing the bill for those people that are here illegally. They're stealing. They're basically stealing from the rest of us. And within our school system, you saw a lot of programs for the gifted kids just get wiped out and more money was going towards you know teaching the Spanish kids to speak our language and a big expense for like free and reduced lunches. These people are making no attempt to try to become US citizens or try to try to blend in with society, try to learn the language, try to adapt and say, you know, you don't see any community service being done by, by these people. They're coming in and, and grabbing what they can get. Before they start every uh, council meeting, they have to say the Pledge of Allegiance. Well, there was a handful of Hispanics, whether they're legal or illegal, I don't know, refused to stand up and say the pledge and they didn't put their hand over their heart. We're for immigration. We're just against illegal aliens coming in, bringing crime, drugs, gangs, and uh, economic burden. And, and not grow. loving our country like we love yeah, it. And you know, gonna... That's all you're asking is love our country and follow our rules and, you know, try to be an American. That should be... First. What we were trying to do is to get an ordinance passed to which we did, make the city enforce the ordinance to make it illegal to have anybody hire somebody here that was here illegally or to rent to them. Basically you could not hire, rent to, or harbor illegals. And if you were caught, well if you're a business you would lose your business license. It just seems pretty ridiculous that we would have to go take a petition, get signatures to get an ordinance passed to enforce a federal law that's already on the books. I mean, it, it seems asinine to me. We shouldn't have to do that as citizens of this country. We shouldn't have to. The federal government isn't going to do anything about it. It's very frustrating because governments, state, federal, and city, are not doing anything about the problem. They basically just turn their head and, you know, let it go. Some people were afraid to speak out, too, just because of the fact that um, you appear very hateful if you're, you know, against illegals. What's the worst thing you can call a person? A racist. A lot of people don't want to be called a racist because it's probably the worst thing you could call somebody. And that's We've especially all yeah. There's nowhere in our, in our ordinance that said any kind of a race. We were addressing illegal, illegal aliens. And uh, I don't care what country you come from. So we've got laws. This country is built on, a, on laws. Let's follow the laws. We follow them. Why aren't they following? I feel we're, we're fighting to try to keep the country afloat. A, a country. I mean, to keep the country from going down the tubes. Strong words and strong feelings from Fremont, Nebraska. To respond, we are joined by a familiar face, especially if you were in a movie theater this weekend, actor, activist, and co-founder of Voto Latino, Rosario Dawson. And from Houston, Texas, a man who deals with the reality of illegal immigration every day, Harris County's first Latino sheriff, Adrian Garcia. Rosario, uh, if you had shot your new box office hit Unstoppable in <laughs> Fremont, Nebraska, and had a chance to sit in that coffee shop with those people, what would you have wanted to say to them? Mm, it looks like we could have, actually. There's a lot of freight trains going through there. Um, you know, one, I would say change is scary. Um, there's been an influx of uh, people coming into this country for the majority of our history. You know, I think it was very scary for the Native people to see people showing up and going, we hate, our, we hate Europe, can we move in? You know, I think that was really scary as well. It's part of American history that, that we've had illegal immigrants and we've had legal immigrants who have come in and changed the fabric of this country. The trains that those, that those freights were going across were laid down by the Chinese. 
We've created internments. We've created all the different types of things to respond to it. But most of the, eventually, we have to deal with the fact that they're here and they're here to stay. So I feel like that's the thing that's it's that's, it's going to be the most important is making sure that as these populations are starting to really get, they're going to be permanently living with each other, to understand each other's cultures and to start working together as Americans. Sheriff Garcia, I'm hearing uh, some fear in those voices. I'm hearing frustration, frustration with government, frustration with unenforced laws, uh, and and a little bit of bewilderment of how did this happen? They're talking about how far they are from the southern border. Well, New York City is a lot farther from the southern border, and if you want to hear a lot of foreign languages that you may have never heard before, you can drop in there, you know, for, for lunch. Uh, what would you want to say to those people? Well, as uh, Rosario touched on, I think um, immigration has been a natural part of our country. It's uh, really at the fabric of what America is all about. I mean, we are a nation of uh, immigrants. Uh, but by the same token, I think... Um, Whenever you start to have some issues, as in my business, uh, public safety concerns, uh, then people begin to try to, uh, or, or their fear begins to build around that regretfully, uh, regardless if it's true or not, or how much it contributes to that, uh, the perception of fear begins to take hold. Maria Teresa, the, the, their reaction is not unique. There are communities like that around the country are trying to pass these local laws about, you know, we're going to, if you rent to illegals, the, 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 these penalties will occur. Uh, what, what is happening in, in these local initiatives, and, and is it, is it are any of them taking hold and in any way working? Some of them are. I mean, there's a case actually in a, a small town in Georgia where they passed these ordinances, and unfortunately, all the undocumented and the and legal immigrants and Americans left because, and as a result, the town was devastated. But I think what we're missing the broader point. Folks are getting recruited to come to this country. They're coming for work. So how do we deal with? the work and how do we actually start talking and talking seriously about the business aspect of it of putting it forth there are meat packing plants in the midwest like in those nebraska communities right. that have used to be unionized they 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 aren't anymore and it's opened it up you said that you've started off on this subject as a liberal and you've now moved over to being a conservative why have you traveled that road well, really, it's my mom's fault uh, because uh, when I was uh, much younger and uh, still understanding it all, my perspective was pretty much how we're talking about here. If people are working and people are here trying to contribute, you know, what's the big concern about it? But by the same token, my, I am the, the, uh, the product of a guest worker. My father was a bracero who helped to uh, build the rail lines in California. And so... Uh, my mother really straightened me out and she says, wait a minute, she says, uh, there's a way to do things. And your dad waited in line, he completed his contract, he returned home uh, when he was supposed to, uh, he followed the rules. And so I think there's, uh, there's that, that uh, balance that we have to try to achieve. Can I jump in there? Go ahead. I, mean, I think the, but the Bracero program that you're talking about, Sheriff Garcia, is no longer available now to workers. So when you say, let's get them in line, there's no line right now. So how would you address that? And how do you address the whole issue of business playing such a huge role in well, you, first of all, you got the wrong guy to ask those questions because that's really we need to have our legislators address uh, those respective issues. Uh, but, by, but by the same token, I, I think there is a lot that's been said about the amount of workforce that's being demanded today. Uh, as you say, uh, people are being recruited from uh, other parts of the, country, of the world. And, um, and regretfully, it creates a, a supply and demand issue that uh, we're all trying to struggle with. And, the, the, the regretfully it puts law enforcement, local law enforcement right in the middle of this conversation. Mm -hmm. Rosario, there are so many different facets of this. There's people who want to talk about just sealing the border mm -hmm. first and then consider other things. There's a very large population here, illegal population, mm -hmm. 12 million maybe. It is, there aren't enough guys with badges in this country to move 12 million back across that border. Everyone acknowledges that. What should we be thinking about how to deal with the 12 million who are here and staying here? Well, I think, first of all, we need to stop just making Latinos synonymous with immigrant. Um, that, that has changed many times over the years. Or illegal and, immigration. There are or, very big numbers in Chinese illegal immigration mm -hmm. and many other populations. Yes, and, and you know, and, and then going back to the supply and demand, you know, the reason why we need comprehensive immigration reform is because the laws that are already on the books don't work anymore. If they did, we wouldn't have this problem, we wouldn't be talking. So what we need to be thinking about is what's right for 2010. We can't keep going back to old pieces of paper, because according to old pieces of paper, I'm not allowed to vote, and as a person of color, you weren't even considered a full human being. Mm -hmm. So that's why we need to inject humanity into this situation and talk about 30 years ago it was easier 
for my grandfather to come from Cuba and make a life for himself. It's much more difficult for anybody to come out of there and do that same, same thing now. That's why these are new problems, and we need to tackle them with new, fresh ideas, because that's the only way we're going to be able to move forward and be able to be com globally competitive. Because as we're arguing about these menial jobs that go to high school diploma owners, owners or less, Bill Gates is importing people from China and India because he has jobs that he would love to give to Americans, but we don't qualify for them because we rank 25 in the world in math and 21 in science. Mm -hmm. And so our education levels are really down. So when you think about that, we're really, are we really arguing over jobs that we really want to have? Should we really be pushing ourselves as a, as a culture? And that's why immigration itself can't be talked about in, in a vacuum outside of the private prison, industrial system, health care, and, and specifically education. We're going to get to our first email question when we come back. And we'll meet a former INS officer who says it's too late for immigration reform. Stay with us. I think the people of Arizona have a right uh, uh, to pass their laws under the 10th Amendment. Uh, I think that uh, it's clearly a result of the federal government's failure uh, to secure our border and to enforce our laws. Americans uh, are right to be frustrated, including folks uh, along border states. But the answer isn't to undermine fundamental principles that define us as a nation. We're back here at the University of San Diego with Rosario Dawson and Sheriff Adrian Garcia. And we're also joined now by Mike Cutler, a longtime immigration enforcement agent who now works with the Center for Immigration Studies in Washington. We're going to go.